Welcome back to the exciting conclusion of part one of the video. Uh, last time we were talking about uh, building a list of the number of different ways that we could choose courses from a list of what algebra, biology, calculus, drama, and ecology. Uh, we did it one, picking one class. Shockingly, there were five ways. We did it choosing two. We had five objects. We chose two at a time. We found 10 unique combinations. And when I left you, I asked you to try to make a list for three. So uh, let's try to do that now. Remember that the set that we're drawing from could be abbreviated down to A, B, C, D, E. And let's just look at what we could do. We're choosing five from five things, three of them at a time. So of course, A, B, C could be a part of that list. But now I wanna be careful. It was easier when I only had two things. What I wanna start doing now is I wanna start considering not only all the ways that algebra could be involved, but two things and let the third thing be a kind of a floater. Um, so my next part of the list, the A, B, C, how else can I use A and B? How, what third class could I choose considering that I've selected algebra and biology? So, of course, we could pick drama, and of course, we could pick ecology. So that would be one way that I might start making the list. And now you have some options, and I'd be interested to see how you uh, proceeded, if you did proceed as I asked you to, um, because I could continue this list and exhaust all the ways that algebra could be used, or I could do an alternative, and in the same way say, you know, okay, well, let's consider algebra being taken with chemistry. Now, just like I said in part one, I don't want to now say B here because I already have that unique combination here. The order is still relevant. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so let's put it together with drama. This is unique. And let's put this together with ecology. And we're going to start to see the same pattern that we saw when we were doing five things taken two at a time. So let's now do uh, one more iteration of this. Uh, and we have algebra, drama, and ecology. So it looks like there are seven ways that we could uniquely take algebra. Um, we have all the ways that it could be done by taking biology in conjunction. We have all the ways that it could be done by taking chemistry in conjunction. <coughs> and you might be concerned about, well, what about the other options for ecology? Shouldn't, if we started with D here, shouldn't we also have um, <coughs> another option? <coughs> not starting over. Um, and the answer is no. If we started with AE here, well, we could do AEB, but we already have that. We could do AEC, but we already have that. We could do AED, and we already have that. So we're just paying attention to all the unique ways we could do this and seeing what comes of it. Now, so I've got seven ways that I could have algebra in that lead position, but it could really be anywhere. So uh, let's think about doing the same thing with biology. So BCD is unique, I haven't listed that. And then of course I could do BCE. And that's gonna be all the ways that I could take bio and chemistry because I still have a biochemistry up here. Um, so if you're thinking about it at this point, you've noticed you know, BC, BC, and BC, three different ways that biology and chemistry could be a part of this set of three when drawn from five, um, which makes sense, you know, they could be uh, paired up with algebra, they could be paired up with drama, or they could be paired up with ecology. So there makes sense there should be three ways. And that's going to play into the thinking we do when I come back from Boston. So um, we got BCD, we got BCE. I think the only other unique thing we're going to find here is going to be BDE. If we take biology, drama, and ecology together. So now ooh, we went down from six to three. Um, so uh, this is working well. I don't have anything else that I can exhaust. I've found all the different ways that biology could be taken. Um, I haven't repeated anything anywhere. So let's keep going and let's put chemistry in the lead position and pair it up with drama and ecology. Huh, it looks like I'm done. Which is interesting because if you recall, when we picked from five things two at a time, we found 10 unique ways to do that. How many ways did we just find to do this? Here's six, here's three, and here's one. So it appears that again, my answer is in 10 unique ways. Neat. 
uh, when we get back from Thanksgiving, we'll see that, oh, I understand why we did that. Um, and those of you that are well-versed in Pascal's triangle may already have an inkling as to that. But anyway, your answer from the break would have been 10 again. So let's look at example two. Example two, we're going to now consider building a two-digit number out of the digits that set one, two, three, four. So we want to think about unique two-digit numbers that could be made. Now this is different from example one in two ways. For one, I know that I didn't want to count my arrangement ABC a second time as CBA. The order that I picked these classes in didn't matter. But consider that building a two-digit number, is the number 12 different than the number 21? Yeah, very different. So now we seems that the order that we're going to put things together in does matter. And for another thing, over here, I couldn't pick like algebra, algebra when I was doing the set two at a time uh, because I didn't want to repeat anything. It didn't make sense in the context of the problem. But does it make sense here? What about if I chose one twice, 11? Hey, that sounds like a number. So it looks like this is what I was talking about when now I'm going to be allowed to repeat things and the order is going to be important. So let's quickly make a list of what we're going to have. Well, oops, squeaky. Uh, let's say that we start off with the number 11, and let's do it systematically. So let's make all the numbers that we could make, judging that the first digit is going to be a 1. So 11, 12, 13, and 14. Repetition. And now we're going to see the order, as I allow 2 to be the tens digit. So 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, so unique numbers. 11 and 21, not the same number. Uh, 31. 32, and again, we see the repetition, 33 and 34. Remember the systematic way of listing things? Obviously a simple example, if they get harder, having a systematic approach can be really helpful. So again, let's start with 41, complete our list, 41, 42, 43, and 44. So now we're taking from four objects, two at a time, but with two differences, repetitions allowed, and the order is important. And that gave us 16 unique numbers. So there's the bell, if you could hear that. Um, thankfully, it's break, so nobody's about to come in. So I was going to pose another question to you. One of the things we're going to be looking at a lot in this unit is going to be rolling dice. So if you're not familiar with dice, six-sided cube, uh, each side having a number on it, usually with dots. Uh, one through six. So if you roll two of them, say that you roll one red and one green, uh, you'd get some kind of unique run result, like a red two and a green five. Uh, we'll be looking at all kinds of things, like the sum of that roll would be a seven. Uh, is that different than other rolls? You know, all different kinds of stuff. So now, quickly, and let's not even make a new video, try to determine all of the possible unique combinations you could get if you were rolling two dice, say again, one red and one green. How many unique outcomes would there be? Uh, and think about it in this way. Could you get a one one? Is that different? Is a one two different than a two one? Uh, so if you want, pause the video because I've already drawn the whole thing up. Pause the video, try to figure out uh, how many unique ones there would be if you have some kind of um, pattern that you've noticed perhaps between these two examples. See if you can apply it here and just pause. How many did you find? Well, I found 36. And I listed them in two ways. I went with the red dice in the lead position uh, and across the top row, I have all ones, followed by two, three, four, five, and six. And I judge the columns to be the result of the green. So the first column of green is one, and I have all these unique combinations. And I want you to notice a couple of things. For one, as we're gonna use this list quite a bit, I want you to see that the result of getting a red two and a green one is different and unique than getting a red one and a green two. And the, see the same thing everywhere. Three, four, four, three. That's why the coloring helps. I want you to notice one other thing. So I see like these guys paired up, and you'll see the patterns kind of all throughout all this, but one pattern, uh, and what am I looking at here? Boom. One pattern I want you to certainly notice is this diagonal here. 
where I have the doubles. And it's just going to come up. You don't really know how yet because we haven't done a problem with it yet. But in one way, and this is just what I've noticed historically, uh, 1, 2, and 2, 1 are unique. And there's, so there's two ways to get those two unique digits. There's only one way to get a 2, 2. There's only one way to get a 4, 4. Getting a red 4 and a green 4 is the same as getting a green 4 and a red 4. So close that video there. And I think I have one more thing for you. And...